Hi guys, welcome to the Cook's Pantry. I've been very fortunate to, I guess, bring it on the road and we have set up camp in my hometown of Noosa. We're on the Sunshine Coast and we've managed to pop past our restaurant in between lunch and dinner. And the plan is to show you guys a few of the things that we have on the menu that people are absolutely going berserk for. And this is probably the front runner. It is our roti bread and I've come to terms with it. I'm willing to share the recipe. We always knew that putting the roti on the menu was gonna be a love-hate relationship. It is a little bit labor intensive and we knew that people were gonna go nuts for it. There was no one up here doing anything like it, but we knew it was gonna be well worth the effort. We would worked on the recipe for quite some time and this is what we've come up with. We think we've pretty much got it nailed and now I'm gonna impart some of that knowledge onto you. So we've got 550 grams of strong bread flour straight into the sand mixer here. Yes, our sand mixer is pink because we have pink in our logo. So this one has been retired. We've had to upgrade it to get a commercial size one because the roti has been that popular. So even though we've got a strong bread flour in there, we add gluten. And the reason why, we we're working out of a prep kitchen and there was a German baker in there and having a chat with him and I hit him up for a donut recipe. He gave me the recipe and it said gluten in it. I've never ever seen that before. Anyway, on having a chat with him, he explained why it gives it structure. So that's why I thought if I want a really beautiful, chewy, elastic roti, which is what we're all chasing, a little bit of gluten in there. So we found just the right amount to put in there. In here, we've got 15 grams of gluten. Uh, I think you can find that at most uh, food wholesalers. It might be a bit of a specialty item, but in order to get this to work at home, it's gotta be in there an absolute must. So we've got 25 grams of sugar and a good pinch of salt. Now, you don't wanna go overboard on the salt. One of the ways that you finish up the roti after you've clapped it, a little sprinkle of salt. Uh, ghee, so some clarified butter. If you haven't got ghee at home, just a little bit of butter, melt it down and just separate it away from the milk solids. So we've got about 30 grams of ghee in there and 300 mils of water. Dough hook in, lock it down and just gently, gently, you don't wanna go full speed, your flour's gonna bust out of there. So we're just gonna let that work and start to bring it together and then really crank it up to get that gluten working. All right, so that is starting to look really, really good. What you're looking for is you want the dough to well and truly come together and you want a spotless bowl. So what's gonna happen is while this is working, it gets a little bit sticky, which is where you want it to be. It just tells you your dough isn't too firm. It's nice and soft and it's just collecting everything off the outside of that <laughs> Doing a little dance at the same time. That looks beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys. That's what you're looking for. If I roll that around on the bar here, there's nothing on there. It's not sticking to that. So that's when you know it's absolutely spot on. Nice and soft, really easy to work with, but not sticking. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just portion this up roughly. So in the restaurant, we go with about 100 gram portions. So you just wanna rip them off like that. Now, when you're mixing, you probably wanna go about three minutes on low just to bring everything together and then give it another four to five minutes at high speed, and that's really gonna work that gluten, activate the protein in the flour, and give you that beautiful texture. So once you've got them all portioned up, sit it on the bench, and with your pinky and your thumb, you just roll back and forth, back and forth, and what you're trying to, to achieve here is to just tuck everything underneath. So you don't have any creases, you don't have anything on the base, you've just got basically a perfect ball, uh, which again is gonna make it so much easier when you wanna stretch the roti. What you're after is like that. So you want it to be perfectly sealed, and then when you press it down and stretch it out, you won't have any cracks, all right? So I'll show you again. Thumb, pinky, on your bench, and just push and pull, push and pull. Take it slow, you don't need to rush it. And I learned this technique when I was 14 years old working in a pizza shop. That's where I learned this. And now to think that that has traveled with me throughout my, my cooking career, if that's what you want to call it, to this point, it's amazing. And I'm so thankful that I picked that sort of stuff up along the way because now it's most certainly being put to good use. Okay, now what we're gonna do a little oil bath and, and what this is gonna help us achieve, we're gonna put them in, A, they're gonna relax and B, they can't be touched by air. So they're not gonna dry out at all. They're not gonna crack around the edges. You want a beautiful, silky smooth, slippery roti dough in order to get the best results when you're rolling it. So 
throw them all in there. When you're, when you're overseas, if you go to a, a little roti stand at night, and this is actually where this fascination and obsession all started in Koh Samui, they have them dipped in softened margarine. So they roll them up, dip them in and out, and then they stack them. Um, and that's just so the air can't get to it and they stay really beautiful and moist. So lock them away, let them rest for probably three hours to get the best results, let them rest, and then I'll show you guys how to rip them. All right, so the roti dough has been resting for about three hours now, and you can see the texture has completely changed. It is so, so soft, and that oil has protected it, so it's it's a little bit slippery, but it's gonna help it stick to the bench and keep it really moist as we try to stretch it. <laughs> Dinner service has started. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pressing it out on the bench, and you'll notice that it really does start to stick down to the bench, especially if you've got a decent amount of oil, and, and then all you wanna do is just gently tease it out bit by bit, so pull it out, what you want to end up having is to be able to see straight through that roti dough into your bench and that's when you know you've got it thin enough. And then we're basically just going to envelope it. So you start from one end, pull it through, tidy it up and when you fold your roti you want to trap air. So we're going to completely enclose that. Once the heat comes up from underneath it will start to generate steam, steam the inside, give you that beautiful chewy texture and then you'll end up with that incredibly crispy crunchy coating that roti is renowned for. As we said, out of that dough, you're gonna get about eight portions. Stack them all up, throw them in the fridge, dinner party time, rip them out, cook them off on the barbecue one by one, pinch of salt, ready to go. So the easiest way to do it, if you're gonna be prepping a few of them, bit of baking paper, pick them up, throw them down, and repeat. All right, all the hard work is done, and I think the best way about doing it like that, if you're gonna spend the day making a curry, a slow roast one, you say you put a masaman in the oven, set and forget, make these, batch them up, stack them in between the baking paper. All you gotta do, pull them out of the fridge and cook them before you serve. So a nice hot pan, decent hit of oil. So easiest way to do it, take one off the top and instead of trying to peel it off or sit it on your bench and use two hands, all you do, straight in the pan. That is gonna initially gonna stick to the base of the pan, which is what we want, because it will enable us to do this. And then we have it. So what we're after, you want it to be almost like puff pastry, golden brown, caramelized. You wanna push it that little bit further, if you want, just have that bit of char. Give it a little peep, see how it's traveling. If you've folded them really, really well, which I'm not sure about this one, you will get it to puff up. You'll trap the air in there. So essentially, that's how you get that beautiful, soft, chewy inside. It steams, and then you get that incredibly crispy, crunchy coating, which is what roti is all about. So we'll give that a couple of minutes in the pan, get that color, caramelization, flip it. Same on the other side. Clap it, salt it, serve it. That roti is looking absolutely spot on. You can see what I'm talking about in here and you get these little sort of bubbles that start to get a little bit more color, a little bit more char. That's what gives you that smoky flavor. Now, other side's looking exactly the same. I'm just gonna throw this straight on the bar hole. I don't know if we can handle it. And then this is how we do it. Clap, clap, stack it up in your little bowl. And then a generous pinch of salt over the top. There we go, guys. I've just given away one of the best kept secrets of some young guys. Have a crack at that.